हेलो एवरी वन सो दिस इज लास्ट लेक्चर ऑफ डाइजेस्टिव फिजियोलॉजी सो हे आर विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द डाइजेशन एब्जॉर्बन ऑफ एवरी न्यूट्रेंट वॉट वी ईट इट्स द मेजर माइक्रो न्यूट्रेंट कार्बोहाइड्रेट प्रोटीन एंड फैट्स एंड सम माइक्रो न्यूट्रेंट ऑल्सो सो लेट एस स्टार्ट स्टार्टिंग विद कार्बोहाइड्रेट विच इज द मेजर कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑर ऑफ फूड दैट इज अराउंड सिक्सटी टू सिक्सटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ आर फूड वी कंज्यूम कार्बोहाइड्रेट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वॉट वी ईट इन कार्बोहाइड्रेट we may talk about how digestion proceeds from mouth till intestine right so we'll be going one by one but before that what are forms of carbohydrate we eat we should know so when we one by one we'll be dealing with the digestion part and we'll first we'll see which forms are available in our food okay not in food only but in our body also because digestion occur uh, of those parts also and uh, Uh, starting with the parts mouth stomach and intestine how the digestion proceeds and after that we'll be talking about the absorption part right so starting with carbohydrates so if we talk about the forms of carbohydrates the the form of carbohydrates are the major complex molecules are polysaccharides polysaccharides composed of uh, like starch we eat for example we eat bread so that that is the starch right so that is polysaccharide there are uh, some oligosaccharides also which are basically uh, the smaller molecules of uh, glucose uh, but uh, actually they are not uh, they, they are also polysaccharides but they have around eight uh, monomers joined together that is oligosaccharides right so polysaccharides are starch there are some dextrins also which have 10 uh, monosaccharides right joined together then the smaller molecules so the basically uh, we are talking about digestion in which the polysaccharides will be broken down into disaccharides right then disaccharides will be broken down into monosaccharides this is the process of digestion which we are talking about and will be dealing with it okay so disaccharides will be coming across like sucrose right so disaccharides are basically two monosaccharides units joined together that is disaccharides so lactose sucrose galactose right we will be talking about that later on and those disaccharides will be converted or basically broken down into two monosaccharides for example we talk about mannose that is composed of two glucose unit if you talk about uh, sucrose that is composed of glucose and fructose okay so those are monosaccharides okay so monosaccharides are uh, the uh, glucose molecule fructose fine okay so now let's see how carbohydrates digestion occur so if we see starting from mouth in mouth we have saliva saliva is composed of salivary amylase amylase is basically carbohydrate splitting enzyme fine so when we eat carbohydrate in mouth first of all the physical breakdown occur because of the mastication process and then salivary amylase it hydrolyzes partially the polysaccharides fine so some of the i mean the uh, some of the units of uh, polysaccharides may be converted into oligosaccharides okay now as the food enters into stomach hcl is there which basically uh, does chemical breakdown and mechanical breakdown because of the movements but uh, basically gastric juice don't have any carbohydrate splitting enzyme okay but salivary amylase which come from saliva with the kind it basically become inactivated here it, it it doesn't activate at this acidic ph so basically carbohydrate digestion don't occur here it will be only mechanical digestion because of the hcl and the movements of uh, stomach fine coming to intestine next so intestine have pancreatic juice and bile although bile don't have any role of carbohydrate but pancreatic juice have pancreatic amylase which is the carbohydrate splitting enzyme okay so basically the here in intestine all the polysaccharides are broken down into oligosaccharides and then disaccharides fine now there is a role of disaccharidase which comes into play but pancreatic juice don't have disaccharidase but we have a brush border epithelium of the intestine and lumen right so those brush border epithelium 
have some embedded enzymes in it that those are disaccharides which converts the disaccharides into monosaccharides we'll be seeing that so this is just broad picture okay so ultimately if you eat starch okay that is broken down by salivary and pancreatic amylase into disaccharides and disaccharide further broke down into different monosaccharides so the idea is basically the complex molecules of carbohydrates are having branching because of the alpha 16 linkage between two glucose group or two monosaccharide group and the linear chain is because of 14 linkage so alpha 14 linkage and 16 linkage so amylase which targets 14 linkage it will break only here and 16 linkage it will break the branching also so ultimately it is broken down into disaccharides and monosaccharides fine if we talk about disaccharide disease these are sucrose isomaltose maltase and lactase now let's see where they are situated so this is brush border epithelium where for example this is brush border epithelium and this is shown as the cell membrane one cell membrane where you can see there are embedded disaccharide disease these disaccharide disease for example this is sucrase now this sucrase is uh, basically splitting the sucrose into two molecules which sucrose is composed of that is glucose and fructose so sucrase enzyme it basically break the sucrose into glucose and fructose so fructose directly can go that we can have a passive transport by a glut uh, glut channel so we'll be talking about here this second molecule which is glucose glucose is then transported into the uh, cell and then uh, underlying blood vessels is there by which the glucose is transported to blood and then for energy transport to various body parts so here you can see this is sucrose or sucrase enzyme which is splitting the sucrose and here this is lactase enzyme which is splitting the lactose into glucose and galactose fine now let's see how they are absorbed so till now we are talking about that how disaccharides are now broken down into monosaccharides okay so glucose absorption so glucose absorption is basically because of the two channels one is a facilitated diffusion which is sodium dependent glucose transporter sglt now this sglt sodium glucose transporter sodium dependent glucose transporter it help it is a co transporter which is basically sodium dependent so as one sodium transport occur one glucose transport also occur because of that and there are the second transport is second transport is the glucose to glut which is glucose transporter here it's type 5 which is only for fructose otherwise it's glut 2 which is for glucose so basically how glucose absorption occur is one is sodium uh, dependent glucose transporter help in uh, entry of glucose into cell and then from cell via glut 2 which is passively allowing glucose to blood stream so that's how the glucose is being absorbed into the blood stream coming to fat digestion so fats what fats we eat fats are nothing but the esters of esters of fatty acids and glycerol if you if you see structure of fat here you can see the gl glycerol having three oh group okay and there are three alcohol the, there are three fatty acids these are acids as you can see coh acids now these three acids combine with these three oh group and form coor which is ester so these are the esters of glycerol and fatty acids so if you see broadly how it can be digested so digestion of this uh, triglycerides this is called triglycerides as there are three esters with glycerol triglyceride now this triglycerides will be broken down into diglycerides plus one fatty acid right then it will be further broken down into monoglycerides and two fatty acids and ultimately three fatty acids will be removed from glycerol so ultimate product is glycerol plus three fatty acids so that's how fat digestion occur right okay so we'll we'll be discussing fat digestion but let's see 
the classification of lipids first of all so either they are simple lipids which which are oil or ghee or wax right compound lipids which are phospholipids like lecithin cephalin any glycolipids which are like uh, the fat composition in your brain the cerebrocytes and ganglioside that derived lipids derived lipids are nothing but during digestion the breakdown products like alcohol fatty acids they are derived lipids okay so if you talk about the fat digestion so in mouth there is salivary lipase which is inactive at more than 6 ph so basically salivary lipase so there is uh, no uh, digestion of fat occurring mouth in stomach when it come in stomach it will be activated so there is gastric lipase also and salivary lipase also where the digestion of fat occur only lingual lipase is responsible for around 30% of fat digestion in intestine bile and pancreatic lipase come into play where bile is most important here although pancreatic lipase also so the major uh, digestion occur in intestine so let's see now if we talk about fat absorption and digestion so the most important thing is the bile first of all which takes part in fat digestion now let's see for for example this is a fat globule right this is a fat droplet which along with bile salts when it, it when it comes to duodenum there is bile salts okay so bile salts surrounds the fat and it split off uh, in many fine droplets okay so these fine droplets uh basically increase are uh, because they increase the surface area because this droplet is converted into many fine droplets so there is increase in surface area why so that the lipase enzyme which is coming from pancreas and uh, obviously the gastric and the lingual one so those lipases they can act on the smaller fine droplets and they can break down the fat easily and that's why the emulsification is required so converting the fat droplets into finer particle by a bile salt is called emulsification then lipase act on that and then basically it convert into free fatty acids monoglycerides and fat and bile salts now the role of bile salt is basically the free fatty acid and other lipids which we have digested which we have eaten like phospholipids so phospholipids free fatty acids they are basically surrounded by these bile salts being amphipathic in nature what does that mean that hydrophilic uh, area outside and hydrophobic area toward these bile salts so that they can they can form a micelle structure as you can see micelle structure so hydrophilic outer surface and hydrophobic toward the fat now these micelles have property that they can passively diffuse into the epithelium okay so as these monosaccharide um, monoglycerides enter the epithelium they again they they are very short acting and they again join with each other and form triglyceride okay so glycerol and the fatty acids they again join triglycerides now these triglycerides surrounded by other components like phospholipids and all so they are called chylomicrons now they can diffuse easily to blood stream okay so the most important thing is the bile which emulsify the fat and the pancreatic lipase act on that and converting into fatty acids those basically in form of micelle they transport into epithelium and then forming again triglyceride they they are transported into blood now from blood what happens is from blood either via lymphatic circulation they go to liver for lipoprotein synthesis or they can go to adipose tissue for storage purpose or they can go to muscle for oxidation and lipolysis so that energy can be produced so this is fate of fat this is all about fat coming to protein so proteins proteins we eat is also a polymer so polypeptides they call right if we see structure of proteins so there are four structure of proteins so starting with the complex molecule which is a quaternary structure right then tertiary structure secondary structure and primary structure so if you see primary structure these are nothing but a chain of uh, protein molecules amino acids so amino acids joined together by a peptide bond okay so c o n h 2 that is the peptide bond so amino acids are joined together that is called primary structure now if this chain like structure become two dimensional either form of sheet or alpha helix that is called secondary structure okay 
Now, if the secondary structure, the tertiary structure is basically the three dimension. Here we are talking about the sheet. It's a two dimensional structure. Here, it's like alpha helix and plated sheets. Both are present, then it will be tertiary structure. And this is one protein, okay? If many type of proteins are joined together, that is quaternary structure. So this is the structure which we eat in form of food. So when we talk about protein digestion, the proteins are basically broken down into large polypeptide, then smaller polypeptide, and then amino acids. That's what we have to see here. If we talk about digestion of protein in mouth, it's only mechanical one because we don't have any proteolytic enzyme in mouth, in saliva. Coming to stomach, there is acid and pepsin present. So acid is the most important, which first of all activate pepsin. And pepsin is the most important proteolytic enzyme. So we'll see, as you can see here, that the protein is in form of pepsin will be converted into polypeptides, large polypeptides. Then the ultimate di digestion occur in intestine where all the pancreatic juice will be secreted which have the major constituent of enzymes for protein uh, digestion. Now let's see how it occur. So first of all, we can focus here that trypsinogen is basically uh, converted into trypsin uh, either uh, enterokinases are basically playing role here. So trypsinogen, so first of all, pepsin in acid. Pepsin and acid, the protein will be converted into large polypeptides, okay, in stomach. Then the chyme comes in duodenum where pancreatic juice is secreted having these enzymes, trypsin, chemotrypsin, carboxypeptidase and elastase. Now how these are activated? Because trypsin, itself can digest pancreas so this is in inactivated form and in pancreas the trypsin inhibitor is present so that it will not lyse the pancreatic cell pancreatic cells will be safe because of the trypsin inhibitor now trypsinogen is secreted into lumen which is converted into trypsin via enterokinase enterokinase are present on brush border epithelium as the trypsin is activated, it will activate all these enzymes present in uh, pancreas. These are trypsin, chemotrypsin, elastase, carboxypeptidase, okay? So, ultimately, with the help of these enzymes, the large polypeptide and smaller polypeptides, they are converted into further smaller polypeptides. There are various brush border enzymes which lies these polypeptides into di or tri polypeptides and ultimately into amino acids okay so amino acids are either transported sodium dependent transport mechanisms or there are peptidases which help in transport of these amino acids which can then transport it into blood okay so if you talk about absorption so either they are sodium dependent amino acid transport or there are peptidases responsible for transport of amino acid into the cell and these amino acids are then transported into blood.